I'm still quite new, but as I continue down this journey of learning minimalism, a few dots have started to connect, namely about how minimalism affects happiness. And that's what I'm going to talk about today. Welcome to Get It Together, and if you're new here, this channel is just me trying to figure out how to get my life together and sharing the tips and lessons I learn along the way. And as you may have noticed, completely different background. I decided to try this out sitting on the couch. We've all experienced it. Growing up, our parents might tell us things and we'll just roll our eyes at them. And as we get older and older, we start realizing they were kind of right. And this isn't just related to parental guidance. We might read something, a friend might say something, we might hear something on a podcast or in a video. That might sound good in theory, but at the time of hearing or learning about it, it just didn't really make sense for us to implement into our lives. But what I want to talk about today, kind of how the dots have started to connect, is something that a friend of mine told me a few years ago. It was actually the first video that's on this channel, and I'll link that video right over here. And what he said to me was, the things that are worth paying attention to are the things that we do every day. And as I started dedicating generosity of thought into learning minimalism and implementing minimalism into my life, those words that he said have really started to connect with me. So what exactly did he mean by that? The things that are worth paying the most attention to are the things that we do every day. You know, our lives are a constant bombardment of inputs. The relationships we have, the work that we have to do, that leak in the ceiling that needs to get fixed, those bills that have to be paid. And all of these inputs gradually add to more and more stress in our lives. There are things that deserve our undivided attention and effort, and other things that, if we just spend a little bit of upfront effort to plan for, we'll be able to make everyday life as simple as possible. If you've been with me for a little bit in this Learning Minimalism series, you'll know that one of the core things that attracts me to minimalism and one of the core goals is to remove decision-making complexity. I think the implementation so far that illustrates this point the most is my new minimalist wardrobe. I'll link that video right over here as well. But the long and the short of it is to ensure that Every single top I own matches with every single bottom I own, matches with every single hat I own, matches with every single bag I own, matches with every pair of shoes that I own. And by doing this, I remove any kind of decision-making complexity and simplify my life when it comes to clothing, which is something I have to do every day. And likening back to what my friend Andrew told me, it's about understanding that there are things that we have to do every day. We have to eat every day. We have to sleep every day. We have to wear clothes every day. We have to spend money every day. And so if we have to pay special attention and dedicate generosity of thought and effort to these things that we have to do every day, then we're already spreading ourselves thin and not setting ourselves up for success because there are all the other things that require our undivided attention and effort. And so connecting the dots as I learn minimalism, I'm realizing that one of the keys to happiness is identifying the things that we have to do every single day and removing all the decision-making complexity so that we don't even have to think about it. There's no stress involved with those things. There's that beautiful cliche quote that we You've probably all heard, which is, life is not measured by the number of breaths you take, but rather measured by the number of moments that take your breath away. But if on top of all of the work stress and the relationship management stress that we have to deal with daily, we're also stressed about what to wear, what to eat, when to eat, wanting to buy things, we won't even have the opportunity to allow ourselves to even live in the moment and identify those moments that take our breath away. To me, minimalism is not something that is prescribed. That's cookie cutter. To me, minimalism is truly self-defined. But I think a wonderful axis to try and examine our own journeys with potential minimalism is to identify the things that we do every single day, that we have to do every single day, and removing as much decision-making complexity as possible from those. That video that I linked earlier about creating my new minimalist wardrobe, there are certain things involved in that process beyond just enabling everything to match together to remove complexity. One example is that I don't have to wear a necktie for work. And so this shirt that I'm wearing right now was a deliberate choice. It's a long sleeve buttoned up shirt that does not have a collar. Because as I was creating the wardrobe and walking through, trying to really imagine my day-to-day -day life and the relationship I have with clothing, one of the things that has bothered me in the past is that any of my shirts, whether it's a casual golf shirt or a full-on tuxedo button up bow tie shirt, is that the only time it really looked good to me was when it was brand new. Because as soon as I would wash it, those collars, they would curl up, even if I had those things that you stick inside of the collar to try and stiffen them. And even though that's a tiny thing, by buying a shirt now that has no collar that's still acceptable for the work that I do, I know that I'll be able to just toss it in the washing machine. And whether I choose to hang to dry or just dump it in the dryer, I won't have to worry about things like a collar and how it looks, needing to iron it or starch it, whatever the case might be. Connecting other dots is realizing that my fat loss journey, whether we're talking about the slow carb diet or a combination of keto and intermittent fasting, removes so much decision-making complexity when it comes to something else I have to do every day, which is food and nutrition. Since the beginning of this year, I've been on a strict ketogenic diet combined with intermittent fasting. Now, 
I'm by no means saying that you should do this, but by having an eating protocol and a restrictive diet that's sustainable, the amount of decisions that get reduced is amazing. For the past six months since I've started, not once have I had to think about what I have to eat for breakfast, lunch, dinner, snacks. I'll link the video over here as well, but at this point, when it comes to the ketogenic diet, I have five go-to meals. That's more than enough variety for me, and I just keep road hitting them. And this also simplifies the decision-making complexity when it comes to doing groceries. Groceries used to take me forever. I'd wander down the candy and chip and soft drink aisle first, and from all the selection would have to wonder, what do I think I'm gonna want this week? Whereas now, because I just repeat the same five meals, and I'm eating only one or two meals a day, grocery trips are now autopilot. When I go to Costco or the grocery store, I just grab the same 10 to 15 things. And I have to say, this implementation of both, I guess, dietary minimalism, as well as really implementing minimalism when it comes to the sheer amount of things that I own, is less about the things that I own, and more about front-loading some effort to think about the things that I have to do every day, and removing all the decisions that I have to make around them. And this frees both my physical capacity and my mental bandwidth to focus on the things that either really bring me happiness or increase my productivity and therefore increase my potentiality of making more money more efficiently and effectively. But connecting these dots from what my friend Andrew told me has really started to show me the value of considering applying minimalistic approaches to everyone's life. And again, minimalism to me is truly self-defined. What are the things that we have to do every day? How do we simplify decision-making processes while also balancing what truly makes us happy? And I think this is an important point because I genuinely believe that it's more than possible to be a minimalist and a fashionista. If you're a fashionista and want a thousand items inside of your closet because clothing and fashion makes you genuinely happy, then by all means, you should be dedicating a lot into what makes you happy. But maybe you hate having to respond to text messages which is something that we all have to do every day. And so front-loading the effort to let all of the people that would typically message you, your closest circle, to let them know that, for example, you only check and respond to text messages at 10 a.m. and 8 p.m. I'm just throwing really random examples. Will help simplify your decision-making processes throughout your day, thus enabling you to focus on the things that you love and the things that you have to do. Maybe you're a foodie. You love experimenting in the kitchen. You love thinking about what you want to eat. And so grocery shopping, really debating which restaurants to try, genuinely makes you happy and so you should double down on that. But if, for example, you don't really care that much about what you wear, then you can pull a Steve Jobs, rest in peace, and wear literally the same thing every single day to remove that decision-making complexity, to free up your mind to enjoy the tremendous amount of decision-making complexity that you choose and want to make when it comes to food. Now, so far, I've just been spewing concepts. What's something that's actionable that we can do? What I recommend is to break out pen and paper. And you can start by listing the things that you have to do every single day. There's no choice in the matter. Eating, sleeping, showering, dropping off and picking up the kids from school, having morning meetings with your coworkers at work. Whatever the case might be, you yourself know your life best and know the things that you have to do every single day. Step two is to dissect that list and see which of those things you actually feel stress about every single day. This is a huge smoke signal, an indicator that it's worth it to spend some time to design a system around that to simplify the decision-making processes involved. Step three, is to temporarily be extremely selfish, especially if there are things that involve other humans, and ask yourself, what would this look like if it were easy for me? And from there, start trying to imagine and setting the parameters and the boundaries to make it fit that kind of ease, while most importantly, enabling you to maintain some semblance of happiness. So we'll take that example of my new minimalist wardrobe attempt. Now knowing that I can go to my closet and take any hat, any bag, any top, any bottom, and any pair of shoes, and it'll always work, removes the decision-making complexity. And knowing that all of the clothing that I have, none of them are so high quality like cashmere or that need to be dry cleaned, also gives me a lot more ease to know that I could just dump everything into the washing machine. But one thing that I would not be comfortable doing is wearing literally the exact same thing every single day because that would not make me happy. And so trying to find the perfect meeting point between happiness and the removal of complexity is something that we all have our own definitions of, but being crystal clear about those definitions Will enable us to create the sandbox, the parameters, the boundaries, to enable us to create that system that removes as much decision-making complexity as possible. If you got value out of this video, please do hit like and subscribe. If you have any questions or want to debate anything, hit up the comments below, and I'll see you guys in the next one.